Bill Gates is not a social entrepreneur. He's got a multinational company that has made a lot of profits. In business, it's not because you are making profit and making money that you are a person that is bad, evil, not ethical. The reality is that money comes out of the transformation you create. If you want to be a social entrepreneur, the first thing is business. With a social enterprise, the transformation is easy to build. It's in the pitch. What you see is what you get. Hello everyone, hello Antoine. Hello. Again for a scale talk, ready? Always. Great. Today we will speak about enterprise, social enterprise, and Antoine, I know you have a lot to say. Yeah, it's an interesting topic. It's kind of a polemical topic. People feel engaged about it, feel involved about it or not. And it's usually either one or the other, like doesn't talk to me, I don't give a damn about it, or, oh yes, it's totally me. And this issue, this topic is interesting because it's a big trap, and we hear a lot of BS about it. So that's the point of, the, of today's discussion. <laughs> Great. So, of course, uh, we will need you to explain a little more what is social entrepreneurship, and what is really the difference, and how we should really look at it. So that's, the, that's why I'm saying there's a trap. What I hear is people who come to me, come, you know, generally speaking, and they say, so we are a social enterprise, we are doing good, we need a discount. And when I hear that, I'm like, Ugh. another one who never got the difference and didn't understand the power of what they're doing. The point when you build a social enterprise is not to apologize. It's not to look for people who can give you discounts. It's not to say you don't have money. It's not to apologize for making profits. It's not to say that, oh, the money is not for me, it's for cause, you know. The point is not that. The point is to say we need to make money. The point is to say we need to have a business model. The point is to say we need to make profit and we are going to charge you for something. But the profit we make, instead of putting it in our pocket, we are going to bring it back into the cause and we are going to make a difference with that. And I'm saying that because most of what I hear is absolute bullshit. I'm going to give you an example, but basically the discussion that I get with social entrepreneurs is this one. People, you meet them at a conference, Uh, networking event, whatever, and you say, what do you do in life? And they say, oh, I'm a social entrepreneur. So me being just a little bit provocative, I say, oh, so you're an entrepreneur. And they say, no, 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 I'm a social entrepreneur. Me. So you're an entrepreneur, right? No, 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 I'm a social entrepreneur. And the good, and, and of course, oh, you're an entrepreneur. No, I'm a social entrepreneur. So the, the joke keeps going like that. And It means that somehow they feel like being an entrepreneur is dirty. Bad. It's bad. Yeah. It's, I'm making money. No, 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 no. I'm just working for a cause. And that's where something is wrong because having the word entrepreneur in being a social entrepreneur or having a social enterprise should be something you're proud of. Mm. If you are a social entrepreneur and you can't actually say, yes, I'm an entrepreneur, then just say you're a volunteer. But don't say you're a social entrepreneur, otherwise it makes no difference. So you've got guts, show it. That's it. And that's exactly where um, people that feel social entrepreneur should not even say it. Because uh, either they are an, a company that makes profits, either they are a non-governmental organization. They're an NGO. So it's definitely not the same. And this is the stature itself of a company, even if you are doing social, it's good, but you're a company. And the point is, so as you said, you can have a charity, right? We have that charity, so we collect donations. Can you please give a donation? We're not paying ourselves. Um, it's volunteering, just give and we will distribute. Okay, fair enough, that's a model. But an enterprise is an organization that is producing an income, having some costs, and therefore needs to have a balance sheet somehow that has a revenue that is superior to the costs, period. So the question is, do you make any profit? Yes, no. 
And there it becomes a touchy topic because the word profit kind of, uh, no, you know, it's dirty. It's like money. Ooh, we don't no, no. Please give me money. But no, I don't want to touch it. Ridiculous. Right. Mm. So the question is not, should you make a profit? Yes or no, because it's dirty. The question is, what are you waiting for? Just work on building a business model that is profitable and then be clear as to the fact that the profit is not going to go in your pocket personally, but is going to be reinvested in the cause. So if you have a social enterprise that is helping um, women empowerment anywhere, sometimes it's in Africa, but it can be around the corner, right? doesn't have to be far then you are selling stuff, you are selling advisory services, you are selling something, and the money is there to push the cause, which is women empowerment, and that's fair enough. There is nothing dirty with that, but it's just, you have to accept it in the first place. And it can be a certain level of that, because uh, you can be a social uh, company, a social entrepreneur, so let's say you give back 80% of your profits to uh, a charity, for example, as you said, for, so you have a brand of uh, underwear for women and you want to help uh, women's empowerment or women's rights or women whatever, but to cause around women because that's your niche. Okay, uh, you can definitely choose to be a social entrepreneur and be an entrepreneur and keep 20% of the profit for you and 80% for that cause. You're still doing a social company because you are helping but you are clear that, okay, you keep a part for you for the job you've done, and then the rest of that you share. For example, Bill Gates. And yeah, but Bill Gates is not a social entrepreneur. He's got a multinational company that has made a lot of profits, and it's then he has level. decided to turn some <laughs> of his personal um, cash into a foundation, which is yeah. another perspective. But where you're right is that you can say, I'm making money selling underwear, and I'm going to give 80% of that to the cause and the rest, 20%, can be... So that's the profit, right? So people have been paid, you have been paid, that's salaries, etc., etc. So either the 20% that remain, you decide that you are the, the shareholder and so you have to pay yourself with dividends or you have some shareholders who invested the money and it was not a donation, right? So those shareholders need to get their money back at some point, which is fair because mm -hmm. it's not a charity. So those 20% are going to go into a fund that can then be used to repay the shareholders in five years. Um, so they gave you money to start with and you have five years to give it back. Fair enough. But there is also another point, which is, again, social enterprise is an enterprise and an enterprise needs to have some funds for investment. Otherwise, it stagnates and it dies. So you make your money selling underwear. You give 80% of the profit to the cause. Fair enough. The 20% that remain stay in the bank so that next year or in two years or in three years, you have some cash to keep investing. And that's really important. I'm going to give you an example of a charity that I coached back in Hong Kong. They were taking people off the streets. The government is not doing the job there, so people die in the streets. That's uh, unfortunate and sad and horrible and whatever the word you want to put to finish my sentence. The government is not doing it, the charity is doing it. The CEO has to be paid. The board is voluntary. But the team has to be paid. So they are getting money from different donors and this and that but they are not just a charity like the other ones in the sense that it's not just please give, please give me money and i'll distribute it with food they are a social enterprise in the sense that once they take people off the street they have a way to uh, bring them back into society so they need to have access to um, housing so Real estate in Hong Kong is extremely expensive. They need to have income to pay for the rents. And then they put someone who sleeps in the street inside that place. And in a place, they are going to put, let's say, five different guys and one who used to be in the street and now is fine. But that guy is checking on everyone. He has to be paid. He needs to make a living. So they have to find a business model 
that works. Someone is funding the thing so that it can keep working and it can keep uh, people off the street. But the way is that to get those five out, they need jobs. So one branch of that charity is a painting company. So when you need to paint the wall outside your building, inside your building, you can call them and they are going to paint your walls for a discounted price. Fair enough. And you know it might be a bit bumpy sometimes because these guys need help, obviously, and they need reinsertion. So sometimes it's difficult, human character and all that. But that's the game. You believe in the context, in the concept, and so you're going to play the game. This is a social enterprise. They are not keeping the profits for them. The profit goes back into the cause, but the organization is built as a company, as an enterprise, to, to make, make a profit, profit that is going to be reused in the process and there is nothing dirty about it. Exactly. And that's the difference. And if people understand that social enterprise definitely needs to make profit to support the cause, then it will make more sense. And um, <laughs> they will also understand that they definitely are entrepreneurs. So, yeah. And as a matter of fact, it's also um, something, if you embrace it, that becomes a positive cycle. The example I have is that charity, for instance, um, we had a call one day and I was um, working with the board and working with the CEO and we were having a meeting. And then, oops, sorry, I need to take a break. A potential donor is on the phone. So the discussion takes place and the donor from bank says, we would like to donate 40K for the cause because it's good for, you know, banks have money they have to bring back to the system. So they had to spend the money and it was a good, a good fit. And I was behind the screen and I said, how about 50K question mark, 80K question mark. And because the CEO on the other side understood my point and that he was very um, free in his mind, very decomplexed about the idea of making money and making a profit and bringing money in the machine. He said, well, our starting point is 50K for the, the, the significant donors. Can you match that? And as a matter of fact, we're working on a project that would be 80K per year for the next few years because we need to build that program in a sustainable way. If you just contribute once, it's complicated. If you can sponsor that for five years, we can start the project now. And the guy on the other side with the board around the table, you know, 10 seconds of silence, let's go for, for 80K. It took 10 seconds to double the, the amount and it made a 40K difference. On the table, back to 80K, something like that, right? For a few years. So the difference is... If you're apologizing constantly about, oh, I'm sorry, I'm social, can you make give me a discount? You're going fucking nowhere. If you say, I have a cause, I have an enterprise, I need to make money to push that cause, things become a lot clearer. But in the first place, you have to fight for it. Yeah, and I will connect to a point that you know, I won't share about that. Um, because... Some people think genuinely they have to be a social entrepreneur to be considered as someone ethical. But in business, it's not because you are making profit and making money that you are a person that is bad, evil, not ethical. And you can be fully ethical by doing your business, at least if you respect your customer, you respect your employees, and you do all in the right way. And you don't have to be a social entrepreneur. But if you are a social entrepreneur and you want the, the hat of being ethical, uh, you don't have to especially say you are a social entrepreneur. It depends on how you work. And in the end, being ethical and trying to give back to communities, to, um, to projects, to a cause, um, is totally up to you and your own way of working. No need to hide behind uh, a social enterprise or whatever. You can do things well and even make profit and even not be a social enterprise and being a fully entrepreneur and share even more to causes because you took it as a full business. So it's really up to people. The question is, how can you use that? How can you turn something that sounds like an accident or like an excuse? I'm sorry. I'm a social entrepreneur, into something brilliant, powerful, that's going to be a cash machine for your cause. 
I'm an entrepreneur with a social cause. And the basic point here is business. It hurts people when I say that, I know, but I'm going to be provoking, right? If you want to be a social entrepreneur, the first thing is business. And the first thing is business is what is your damn value proposition? So if you want to be a social entrepreneur, stop apologizing, stop looking for excuses. Find a damn good value proposition people are going to want and they're going to pay for it. Either because they are going to be the first um, user and they are going to use your product knowing that you are going to use the money for a good cause. Or if it's a charity kind of system where you need donation, build a value proposition that is so irresistible that it becomes a no-brainer for people in the same way you would do for business. If in business you sell marketing automation and it's just brilliant, people buy it, good for you. If you're doing social enterprise and your selling proposition is I am putting people off the streets and by the way, my premium sponsors are going to be written everywhere in the you know logos everywhere when I communicate and all that that can be a very good value proposition for a bank for um, an industry that needs to have some good visibility and show that they are close to the community there are similar things for instance in relation to environment you have social enterprises that plant trees their value proposition is we are going to compensate your carbon uh, emissions so give us money, I'll say it again, give us money, 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 we are going to plant trees for yourself so we can decrease your carbon emissions and this is a damn good value proposition with a damn good social or environmental element. Yeah, and I have actually two examples. I, I told you I will go on one, uh, I will go on that one first and then on the other one. Uh, so there is a project that was launched a few years ago when I began e-commerce uh, named for Fortune, Fortunes and um, is based on the environmental ID. Uh, so the cause is that, okay, we have only Fortune. So we need that to be clean and don't pollute um, them too much. And uh, they launched something really simple. We gather all the plastic in the ocean and with this plastic, we create bracelets. They've sold millions of bracelets with this simple reason. And the more uh, bracelets they sell, the, the more money they have to go to clean the ocean. And it's a cycle. So this is an example of a company that in the environmental uh, way made a lot of profit and they made big, big, big numbers in that field because they had a cause, because they showed that cause and because it became kind of logic for the people to pay for that, uh, to help that cause. And the other example, you talked about threes. Actually, it's a, I think it's a French company uh, that came with the idea of having a vehicle that speaks to every investor. What is it? We have a hedge fund that can bring up to, I don't know uh, the numbers, but let's say 10 or 15% a year in profit for whoever invest in us. How? Because we invest in uh, planting trees. It's a special tree that in one year gets to a few meters already. So it's a tree that uh, goes fast, that attracts a lot of uh, carbon, and that anyways is really good uh, for the earth and is really good for uh, reforestation, and that is really good for uh, paper, that is really good for many things in the supply chain of wood. And because they have every step of that uh, planting, cutting, making it paper, and they have all the supply chain around that, they are able to make huge profit from it. But huge profit while planting, huge profit while reducing carbon in the atmosphere. And it goes really fast because in few, uh, just by being discovered and going on TV, they just got already a few uh, millions of investors and I know it's growing and they are growing just because they have a cause and they make profit for the people, <laughs> for the investors to come and put more money. So you see the idea in the end, because they do something that really help the, the, the earth and they have the cause and they use that cause to bring more money. 
And in the end, nobody is shocked if there is a profit that is given back to the shareholders. No, because it makes sense and it's uh, directly said. It's not hidden. It's not. It's directly said. We will make you profit if you help us help, help the world. To be simple. And so people make profit because I help. And I, for example, me as an investor, I would rather put money here to help the world than put money in something else in the end because they had this true talk of saying how they would make money and what they will do with my money and how they will make profit, of course, because I want to be sure that I will make money. So uh, that's where it's really interesting in a way. You can have a cause and still reinvest so much for that cause while having a real business. And to finish with this discussion on something really positive, because, okay, you know, I'm hitting the table and saying <laughs> stop the bullshit. But um, beyond that, the reality is that there is a really strong point here. Most companies, when they try to sell something, struggle with one thing. How do you sell something people need when they don't want it? Or how do you sell people something they don't want in the first place, but you want to make sure they're still going to want it anyway so that they can buy it, right? So it's always a question of how do you create the tension in the first place? So that there is a need. So that you create the need, you create the one that they don't have in the first place. That's why there are some advertising companies, right? And the answer to that is very simple, emotional reaction. Mm -hmm. If you try to explain to people that they need to invest money in a fund because we need to plant 2,000 trees to serve the earth. And so they have to invest into it because it's the only thing that they should do. So they have, it's repetitive, it's analytical, it's boring, and nobody's going to do it because they want to invest in their kids first and blah, blah, blah. If you turn the same story into um, a wake-up call, into a conscient, ecological conscious thing, If you turn thing, the, the story into you don't have to time to, to act for the environment, fair enough, put your money in, we'll do it for you. You create an emotional reaction. And the emotional reaction is what makes people act, take action now, right? So when the typical enterprises that sell things to make money have a struggle with creating the action, the social enterprises have a luxury, which is with the right pitch, which comes pretty easily as, soon, as long as you know how to, to, to build a pitch. They have something that people want. They have the emotional aspect that is going to piss people off. If your social enterprise is about environment and you speak to people who are passionate about the environment, it's easy to sell them something. It's easy to make them sign. If your passion is about saving street dogs, it's easy to... to to get people behind you. If your passion is about cleaning the ocean, it's easy to get people involved because it's something that's not going to cost them much, but it's going to make them feel good. So having that logic about I'm building a social enterprise is bullshit, excuse my French, if the only thing you're trying to get is discounts and getting sorry about what you're doing and apologizing for what you have, what you're doing. But it's extremely efficient if what you have is a cause that you're trying to push and that you use to get people passionate and emotional about what you're doing. And that gives you an edge on the usual enterprise that is just there for profit. And if I wanted to say that differently, the reality is that money comes out of the transformation you create, right? Mm -hmm. So when you're a business, you make money because you create that transformation for people. And it's not always easy. That's why the money doesn't come. But with a social enterprise, the transformation is easy to build. It's in the pitch. What you see is what you get. So there is no excuse. It's just a, a mindset shift and something to build. So conclusion, focus on the value proposition and get going. Perfect. Thank you, Antoine. See you soon. <laughs> see you soon, guys.